All right, guys. Let's see. This is take two. And, you know, I'm going to loosen this up because this thing don't want to rotate like it's supposed to. There we go. All right. Dior's here. Again, take two. <laughs> so, we be going over a little get-home bag that I put together two years ago. Okay. This is for when I'm uh, driving over the road as a over-road truck driver. Uh, I put this together when I was working for Swift. Plan is eventually I will start driving on the road here soon. Um, this bag can double as a bug out bag, but that's actually not its original purpose, original intention. Uh, would like to point out before we go on these weapons right here, which you've already seen, Moss 12 gauge Mossberg Maverick 88 with the top folding stock and uh, European American Armory 357 revolver. These items are actually not inside the bag, okay? These do not get stowed inside the bag. They will, however, be within reach in the event that I need to grab them. Oh, it's no sin. I guess we just had a cat walk by. That's okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and continue. I'm going to have to place this camera in several different places to get a little bit better uh, picture because, again, I can't fit everything, and I have to use this broomstick as a pointer. So we're going to position over here. All right, so starting out here, as you can tell, there are going to be some things that are going to be pretty prolific throughout this pack, items of concern, and uh, like I said, I, there's, a, there's going to be a reason why you'll see doubles and triples of certain items. One of the things that is going to be reoccurring are these plastic Ziploc bags. Honest to God, after my experience of trying to keep a halfway functioning first aid kit in the back end of my pickup truck and try to keep unwanted excess moisture out of my kit and keep it from ruining my first aid items i figured that when i put stuff in plastic bags i don't have that issue so starting out this right here has a uh pair of shorts like one pair of basketball shorts and i got one t-shirt all folded up and rolled up this t-shirt actually have a pair of socks like one clean pair of socks and a clean pair of underwear rolled up um right here i have a folded up and rolled up pair of uh wrangler cargo pants with a bungee cord in the middle keeping it rolled up nice and tight um this bag right here i have three clean pairs of underwear and four clean pairs of socks all nice and neat rolled up folded up so i'm told i will have four clean changes of underwear and five clean changes of socks okay going a little bit further out in fact you know what maybe i don't know no we'll just stay right here um Right here, this is a two-piece rain suit, uh, raincoat, and uh, PVC rain pants. Right here, I got a pair of 511 tactical gloves for, well, for handling the weapons and basically just general purpose to keep my hands from getting cold. Because, you know, don't know what time of year I'd end up having to abandon my truck and walk home. Right here, I got a pair of leather gloves, wet well, leather work gloves for handling hot items. And we're going to bring the camera around so it's a little bit closer. Okay. I'm going to pan down here. Um, right here, I've got a bandana for use for facial covering. Used, well, I don't plan on using it as a, uh, I do not plan on, on using it as a handkerchief, but, you know, can't happen. Or it could be used for field dressing for wounds. Hopefully not. But primary deal with this is going to be used for uh, basically straining out water from sources that are questionable you know i don't want a whole bunch of silt i don't want a whole bunch of unnecessary particulate going into my filter or being in my water in general if i use the potassium uh, tablets to clean my water so that's what that's for medium duty tarp we are not going to be carrying a tent in this kit so i will have a tarp for general purpose to be used for rain catchment or it's going to be used Actually, in this case, it's going to be used. This will be the tent, so that's part of the reason why I got bungee cords and other forms of cordage. Um, so we're going to turn the... So this general area right here, so basically right here from the hydration kit all the way over here to the e-tool, these items, just this area alone, not this stuff right here, not the water bottles, not this stuff over here. Um, these items right here are actually kept on the outside of the bag. Now... Some of the quote-unquote professional preppers or survivalists will state do not 
have anything tied to the outside of your bag. And you know what? They're correct to a degree because the items jingle, they rattle, they make noise, they draw attention to you. Um, the whole idea is to be as gray as possible. Um, but when I have this thing put together, and I will show you what this bag looks like when it's all put together, you'll see how I have this secured, and you'll see that it doesn't jingle or rattle. I'm not going to really have much of a risk of losing anything or anything falling off because of the way, you know, what manner in which I secure this stuff. So, starting out, I'm going to pick this up. Right here is my e-tool. This is a Coleman brand e-tool. It was $10 over at China Mart. Um, so, one thing I like about this e-tool versus the other Coleman e-tools I've had in the past, this one looks a little bit more solid for two reasons. So the original e-tools that Coleman made, all they had was just this locking ring, and that was it. This one, they actually included this, uh, I guess you could say it's kind of like a washer, very least uh, a protective ring for your locking ring, so it keeps it from getting all dented up. Because in the past, I've had it where I'm trying to break through some really tough packed soil to dig a hole that this ring gets all bent up. Well, with this little washer right here in place of this uh, locking ring, and this is, uh, I want to say this is like eighth of an inch thick, this will keep this from getting all banged up and bent up so that's one nice thing uh the other thing too so this is super compact this doesn't have a, a folding handle per se it's actually got a uh two-piece handle okay that thread into one another so fold it up it's pretty compact um as you can see got our typical saw blade not really sharp um i don't think i've ever used any saw blades on any of the e-tools like any e-tools. I suppose one could probably sharpen that up. Just like one could sharpen up this blade. Make it multi-purpose. But. One of the things. Oh and hey it's made in Taiwan too. So I don't even know why I said China Mart. But one of the things. That I like about this e-tool. So I got three position shovel blade okay. So you know stove position. We could have it out as a trowel. Or as an actual shovel. On the reverse side of the blade, I've got this folding pick, okay? This pick will fold out straight, you know, I can have it straight or, I don't know. I suppose I could sharpen that and make that into a weapon, too. But, pretty, looks like a pretty solid shovel. Comes with this little green carrying case. And actually, inside that green carrying case, I actually keep this uh, stowed inside as well. This is a UST brand survival saw. So, I will have means of cutting some halfway decent pieces of wood and it can it also can double as a snare down here it's a ust brand hatchet it's a little flat hatchet survival hatchet this thing's pretty light let me get that off there pretty light uh it's got a paracord wrapped handle so again additional source of emergency cordage if needed uh, i doubt it with as much cordage as i've got on this kit um it's got hex wrenches so, yeah, there we go, a little bit more purpose. This, I guess, doubles as both a nail puller, spike puller, bottle opener, and then this right here, this looks like this could be used for cutting a seat belt or potentially cutting cordage. It looks halfway sharp. It isn't real sharp, but, you know. And, you know, probably not the best hatchet, but, you know, it's not the worst thing out there. So, I kind of go medium gray with a lot of my stuff because I want to be able to afford things, but at the same time, I want stuff to last. And then... My sheath, my nylon sheath, I actually have a little D-ring. And this D-ring actually locks. So I got a little locking nut on here so this thing won't just simply come loose. Alright. Another thing that you're going to see that's pretty prolific throughout this kit. Means of starting a fire. I've got several lighters and several sets of matches. And uh, I've got quite a bit of tender to start a fire if needs be. You know, fire, emergency uh, source of heat means of cooking food, means of purifying water. This one is a big lighter. As you can see, I freaking taped the absolute crap out of it with some electrical tape. And I've got a, I've got a D-ring taped on here, so I don't have to worry about this thing coming off at all anytime soon. And I just keep this attached to the outside of the bag for quick and easy access. Okay, right here, I've got a mossy oak survival knife with a fake antler handle. <laughs> um, I want to say this is this is a decent sized knife. I want to say it's probably about five and a half, maybe six inches overall length. Stainless steel. I'm assuming this has got to be Chinese quality. Uh, I didn't 
I don't recall spending a whole lot on this knife. I think this is like eight or ten bucks. It's not a Harbor Freight quality. I think it's a little bit better. And it comes with a pretty decent leather sheath, so, you know, hopefully it'll get the job done. Again, hopefully I won't have to use any of this stuff, but you never know. All right. All right, down here, I've got a pair of binoculars. As you can see, it's sitting in a, in a uh, zipper sandwich baggie. Again, I'm pretty big on baggies because I don't want my stuff getting unnecessarily wet when I don't need to be. Um, if these get wet, the lenses will fog up, so there you go. Um, comes with a little lanyard, and then I've got a little microfiber cleaning cloth uh, set of instructions to use these. Uh, they're pretty easy and straightforward, but I'm sure there's some other functions I haven't used on. And I've got two sets of alcohol, uh, alcohol wipes to uh, clean the lenses if they get dirty. And comes with a little nylon elastic uh, carrying case. It's got a little belt loop attachment on the back side, but, you know, again, I just use that to strap on the outside of the bag. So, right down here, SPF 50 sunscreen, China Mart brand. This is prior to me boycotting China Mart. And uh, down here, got compass and... Uh, the monitor and it's got a little chart back here to tell you the uh, ambient temperature you know what the, what the temperature feels like uh, this thing did focus now it stopped focusing that's great but anyhow it's got a little chart basically telling me wind speed versus outside ambient temperature and what the actual temperature feels like uh, you know factoring in wind chill all right so down here this is my first aid kit you guys have seen this uh, this is pretty much a similar first aid kit to what I have in my get home bag in my pickup truck. Um, this one I've added a little bit more stuff, but for the most part it's pretty much the same with the other one. Um, starting out, I've got a Stanley folding knife. It's not great, but it's not the worst knife. I might upgrade it eventually, but for now, this will have to do. Uh, I've got a little Norlite flashlight. It takes a single AA battery. And it's Reasonably bright. I want to say probably about maybe 30 or 40 lumens. Uh, I added Tums because, well, knowing me, I get indigestion at the least expected time, even just from drinking water. Uh, got another package of Tums. Right here, I added a lighter. Added a uh, pack of waterproof matches. This kit also comes with a little survival whistle. I like to call it a rape whistle. And it also comes with a little button compass. That stays on the outside of the bag. Uh, so, moving on over here. Let me find my pointer stick. So, this is my hydration kit right here. Um, got a mill surplus uh, canteen, mill surplus uh, boiling cup for the canteen, and a little holster, mill surplus holster for the canteen. Again, prolific item right here. Always have multiple multiple means of starting fire. So got a little big lighter in there and multiple means of filtering water. I got potassium, potassium iodine uh, tablets here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to scroll over this way before I forget this. This item right here this is one item that I will not be able to easily remove. This is a roll of tape that I have zip tied to the outside of the bag. It's actually electrical tape. Um, I chose the electrical tape because well for the most part electrical tape will do will perform most of the functions that duct tape will so and it's a little bit more compact so it'll work for emergency cordage and emergency adhesive for bandages and such for wounds oh i forgot to mention this kit i did this first aid kit i did include some uh quick clot and some bleed stop uh this bag is just a old backpack that was uh, issued to me back when i was in boot camp for navy I've had that backpack for over six years now. It's one of the few backpacks that's actually survived, so I'm actually impressed. So I got that. That's pretty much the bag. And then down here, this is Ozark brand sleeping bag from China Mart. This one's actually rated for zero to 20 degrees uh, weather. So it's comfortable. The uh, 
minimum comfortable uh, sleeping temperature for this is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I've actually got a sleeping bag liner, removable sleeping bag liner they added to it for, well, added insulation for one, and secondly, so I can I can easily clean the liner a lot more easier than I can clean the sleeping bag. So, And there's actually a bungee cord inside of here actually used to tightly roll up and basically hold this bag together so I can get it in this stupid little bivy sack here. All right, we're going to move this camera on over here on this side. All right, and maybe get it centered a little bit better here, centered as best I can. Oh, I guess I'll just scroll up and down some more. All right, so starting out, I've got a whole bunch of Mountain House meals. Uh, almost said, so I got what, two, four, six, eight, eight Mountain House meals. I've got four. GI issue uh, MREs. I've got four uh, lentil, you know, bean lentil packets right here. And I've got four tuna packets in two different flavors right here. And I've got six packets of Swiss Miss hot chocolate mix. And I got a pack of extra sugar free gum. Um, this looks like it's a lot, but it's really not, especially considering that this is a, like I said, it's a get home bag. In my truck driving, uh, get out of here, cat! Come on, get out of the frame. All right, in my truck driving, uh, like I said, if anything were to go down, and for any reason I had to abandon ship, so to say, um, I could be as say as close as like maybe 100, 150 miles away from home, or I could be pretty much as far away as like 1,500 miles. So, all actuality, this is not enough food. In that case, I will be operating at a calorie deficit. I've calculated that each of these mountain house meals are between going to be between seven, 700 and maybe 850 calories a piece. Um, for the most part, they're all two servings. There are a couple of them that are two and a half servings. Um, if I ration this out, like I said, so right now as this sits, this is probably about maybe 11, 12 days worth of food. If I ration it out, I might be able to stretch it out to maybe two and a half weeks, maybe. But, you know, the whole plan is to, one MRE will be a full meal for that day. And, uh, yeah, it'll basically be roughly about a packet and a half of Mountain House. Or if I'm eating this stuff, there'll be like a couple packets of tuna with a couple packets of the lentils with some hot cocoa. Cocoa for the uh, added calories and sugars. Um, right here, I've got some silverware spoons and such. Actually, they're all spoons. I couldn't get all MRE spoons, but I do have two MRE spoons. These are just basically for all those mountain house meals. Everything's designed to be disposable after I'm done using it with the, you know, in terms of the food prep items. Um, I got two 10 ounce bottles of water right here, and I've got three quart size bottles of uh, water right here. Um, I'm not sure if the hydration kit. Okay, so the hydration kit right now, as it stands right now, it's empty. Again, that'll be one of the items on the outside of the bag. This will get filled up in the event that something happens. I will. I, I will. Always, always, always make sure I have an extra bottle of water laying around in the truck so that way I can fill this up prior to leaving. So with this being filled up and then these three bottles and then those two, this will be a little bit more than a gallon's worth of water. Now as much water as what's in my get home bag, my pickup. Then again, this one, it's got a little bit more food. And uh, of course, the other difference is I've actually got change of clothes in here. Uh, this right here, these are uh, more MRE spoons. These ones actually happen to have salt and sugar packets and creamer packets. So I figure the salt and sugar packets would be excellent for making some sort of a, an electrolyte solution if in case I'm getting a little bit dehydrated. Um, now I know big question is over here in this corner, what the hell do you have over here? You don't even drink. Yeah, that's right. I don't drink. So I've got little 200 milliliter, uh, three 200 milliliter bottles of vodka and three 200 milliliter bottles of Jim Beam. Point being, um, there is some medicinal purposes to having alcohol and uh, even though they say you need your alcohol to be at least 60 needs to be at least 64 percent alcohol by volume which would be like 128 proof otherwise you can't sterilize things i'm still going to try to use that stuff to sterilize my hands if it needs to be main purpose though trade and barter now what am i doing trading and bartering when i'm supposed to be getting home well here's the point again like i said i could be as far away as 1500 miles if some good old boy still has a running pickup truck that hasn't been affected by an emp guess what I might be able to buy a ride off of him with some of that. So, and uh, again, some of these towns I come into that have roadblocks, 
if I want to like not be hassled, I might use this as an item to as a as an item of safe passage, you know, a parlay, as you if you if you will. So that's why I have that stuff back here. And actually, I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer because it's kind of hard to see. Look at that, you get get full frame of my one of my cats. Uh, here, there we go. Bring the camera down. So down here, this is a water purification kit. Um, comes with a syringe. I've got a little Sawyer Mini. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is rated for like 20,000 gallons. Could be wrong. I don't remember. I doubt I'll ever come near the max limit for this thing. And it's got a little straw to attach to the, uh, attach to the uh, syringe. And, uh, yeah, the bag I can fill up with water. I would imagine this could probably hold somewhere between like a pint and maybe a pint and a half of water. Um, and then right here. This is the potassium, the two-part potassium iodine tablets. So I've got two bottles here, and then these are just single tablets right here, single bottles. So these, like one of these bottles, will replace two of those. So with what I got here on my hydration kit and what I got here, I've got enough between all those those water tablets. I got enough to probably purify about almost 20 gallons worth of water. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go back to where we were. Let's see. All right, I guess we'll work, start on the right and work our way to the left. So, I guess we're getting into a little bit more of the hygiene section uh, prior to that, though. So, this is the Ziploc baggie. It's got a uh, wash rag, and then I've got a little scouring pad to clean this cup up after I'm done using it. I've also got two bottles. I want to say these are like two, two and a half ounce, maybe three ounce bottles of, uh, of uh, dish soap that I repackaged. And these little travel size bottles you can get at the Dollar Tree. I've even got little generic labels on them, say dish soap. Uh, SPF uh, 50 sunblock. Again, we don't know what time of year I could be abandoning this truck. It could be abandoned in the middle of high summer with uh, lots of sun rays, you know. And with me being very white and lacking a lot of protective melanin in my skin, well, I'll look like a lobster if I'm out on the road for too long without some proper skin protection. Uh, bug spray. Again, don't know what time of year it'll be. And don't know what state I'd be forced to abandon the truck in. If I'm uh, abandoning my truck somewhere in the south or, say, somewhere up north in, like, Minnesota or something during summertime, I don't want to be getting eaten up by mosquitoes, so insect repellent with 25% D. All right, now moving into the actual hygiene section. Um, so I got two packages of flushable wipes. And let's see, how many? 48 wipes in each. So rather than carrying toilet paper, I've got the wipes. So those actually do a better job cleaning my behind than uh, regular toilet paper. Antibacterial wipes, some more antibacterial wipes. These are the little single packets, single use packets. And then I got some more, these are wet one brand uh, antibacterial wipes. These are a little bit bigger. So these items right here can double for, well, wiping my behind after I'm done finishing my business. Or they'll be used for taking impromptu sponge baths when water is not available. A pond or a creek or a river is not available to bathe in. Um, over here. I've got six bars of soap that I've taken from numerous truck stops when I was uh, taking showers. And I got two bottles, little travel size bottles of uh, shampoo that I got from a hotel. I got three razors. Point for the razors is like right now I've got long hair, right? Well, when I start driving over the road again, I'm going to start shaving my head again. I'm going to keep my head shaving bald. The reason why I keep my head shaving bald when I'm driving over the road. It's because of the few times where I was unable to take a shower and I had to take an impromptu sponge bath. It's a lot easier to clean your hair and your scalp when you don't have any hair to clean. And all you have to worry about is your scalp. Plus, with keep my head shaving, all I need is just a bar of soap at that point. Just to scrub my scalp down. I got two, two uh, tubes of uh, Colgate toothpaste. Uh, two bottles of Gold Bond body powder. This is mostly for when you get rashes in between your legs from walking so damn long and your legs rubbing up against one another. I don't know how many of you have that issue, but I had that issue a lot even when I was in scout camp and I found that this stuff really does help. Plus, throw that in my uh, boots for when I'm walking so they don't stink so bad. Uh, I got two more tooth little bottles of toothpaste, travel size, and I've got a toothbrush with a little case, a little zipper case, and I got an extra toothpaste, uh, toothbrush, a little uh, container of Carmex lip balm, and um, let's see, down here, let's see, down here, got extra little zipper bags, plastic zipper bags, these are about a gallon each. This right here is a 
plastic bag full of more plastic bags. These are uh, like the grocery bags. These are perfect for multiple uses, trash, whatever. I've got a compass with a ruler and magnifying glass, and it's got a little lanyard attached to it. I've got a little miniature size road atlas. I might actually include, I might, like I said, this kit is subject to change. I might actually include a, a little bit more detailed road atlas, but this is it for now. This is a little bit, you know, this is pocket size, kind of, sort of. Um, got a sewing kit, got an emergency space blanket, I've got a little uh, set of index cards for how to tie different knots, um, got a notebook, and I should have, yeah, there we go, pen, pencil, um, over here, and I'm going to see if I can't bring this a little bit closer. So, just below the gum, let's see, can I zoom in, yeah, there we go. Yeah, how's that look? So this is my fire starting kit right here. I've got three Bic lighters. I've got a little fire steel. Um, this is a uh, container, water waterproof container full of stormproof matches. I've got my fire starter, a little fire starter tender right here. Um, this is Vaseline coated cotton balls. Idea is courtesy of uh, Staff Sergeant BA at Step 1 Survival. I've got two cans of Sterno for if in case either making a fire is... Not possible because of the lack of tender and kindling, or because it's a, it's a I'm in an unsafe environment or unsafe area to make a fire. Okay, so let's see down here. I've got Ozark brand knife again. Uh, eventually, I'll probably be upgrading knife. It's not great, but you know, little do. Um, let's see. I've got, okay, down here, I've got three boxes of uh, ammo. This is 357 uh, Magnum. This is uh, 124 grain semi jacketed uh, hollow points by Remington. They're designed for taking out bear and self defense. Um, right here, gun cleaning kit. I've got a universal handgun clean kit right there. That's that blue tube with all the brushes I need. Uh, I've got a brass bristle bl brush, and then I got a like a plastic bristle brush right here, some patches, and uh, I've also got some bottles of uh, cleaner. I got a cleaning rod for the shotgun. Um, moving a little bit up here. So this is kind of the light kit right here. I've got one glow stick. I've got a uh, little uh, mag light flashlight. It has a little clip here. I love these flashlights, but man, they're expensive, and I can't tell you how many of these damn things I've lost. But I've got three modes, so this is bright, and I got strobe. I want to say this is like three or four different settings, and then this right here I've got lenses, so different color lenses, blue, green, and red. So if I want to worry about my light discipline, and then I've got a little Ziploc baggie full of batteries. Some uh, double A's for that flashlight in my first aid kit. Some triple A's for this one. So, that's the light kit. Uh, right here, these are uh, little emergency washcloths. All you have to do is put a little bit of water on them and they'll expand. UST brand. Um, let me see if I can't... Oh, I need, you know what I need to do? I need to scroll out. Nope. Scroll out. There we go. Okay, right here. This is my cordage kit. So, I got 550 braided paracord right here. I want to say this is like, I don't know, 50 or 60 feet of it. I've got zip ties. Idea is uh, courtesy of Staff Sergeant Badass off of uh, Step 1 Survival. I've got two 500 pound ratchet straps and then I've got bungee cords. Between the bungee cord that's on that pair of pants right there and that bungee cord that's on that sleeping bag right there, I've got five bungee cords in total. Um, yeah, and pretty much that is the, the kit in a nutshell. Um, I guess we'll uh, go ahead and pause, and I'll show you what it looks like put together. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention. My uh, Get Home bag also comes complete with a single traveling size kitty cat. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, there we go. Got everything all buttoned up. 
So this is pretty much it right here. Now, this canteen will actually not be sitting here permanently. This is just kind of a whole self-containment thing. I'm trying to keep this attached. And what's probably going to happen with this is either this will go on my regular belt on my pants or I'll put it on uh, this web belt for my pistol. Okay. Um, obviously, pistol and shotgun there. They're going to be kind of separate, so they're not really going to be stowed with this. About the most I could probably do is stuff this 357 in there. Um, but yeah, got the sleeping bag, bungee corded to the top, secured it basically three ways. Actually, four technically, because I'm using one of these straps right here. I got looped around the tops of my backpack straps here. And yeah, all the gear that I said that was on the outside of the bag, got it cinched down nice and tight. This stuff will not wiggle around. Won't jingle, won't be loose. I don't think I'm going to have any issues about losing any of my gear here because this stuff's on there. And there is a, a little bit of webbing, actually, believe it or not, sewn on this side of the bag. Too bad I didn't sew it on the other side. But, yeah, I've got everything. My hatchet, my knife, my shovel, my binoculars. Uh, my lighter's underneath all this, and same with my uh, compass. And uh, you barely see the sunscreen. First aid kit. So, yeah, this is it. Um, let me put the camera down here. Um, so yeah, one thing I'm gonna real quick explain before I, uh, leave. So like I said, uh, being with me being, the uh, possibility of me being an off-road trucker, um, like I said, I've probably got just under 14 days, I'd say somewhere around 12, 12 days worth of food. Um, that's me operating at a calorie deficit, um. 2,000 calories would be a calorie deficit. Me walking on a good day, walking between 25 and 30 miles, huge, huge calorie deficit. And then with this pack, not including the firepower, but this pack is about 65, 70 pounds. So it would be a serious calorie deficit. And uh, on top of that, if I'm rationing my food out to make it last as long as possible, you know, more calorie deficit. So it's not perfect. Not ideal, but it's better than nothing. Um, you're probably wondering whether or not, well, have you actually practiced carrying this pack? Can you actually walk around carrying it? I have. I have. I've done eight and ten mile walks. Granted, I wasn't doing, like, any major, like, serious hills. But I have done it in the past, so I'm pretty confident I can carry this. Now, have I practiced carrying all of that? No, because I... Other than the current state that I live in, I don't really feel comfortable carrying all that and this at the same time. I'll probably get stopped and questioned by the police and what I'm doing. But, yep, this is it. Alright, anyway, I'm Diorce, and I'm out. You guys have yourselves a good one. Bye-bye.